Time to talk a little Dallas Cowboys football, and I can't think of anybody better to talk to about Dallas Cowboys football than Mickey Spagnola. And Mickey, kind of a rough week. Uh, you know, you see Danucci struggling as a quarterback. I mean, he's, he, he, you know, and you got to give the guy some credit. He was, he, he made a few plays, but, but do you, I'm going to put you in the head of the GM. Do you ride Danucci the rest of the way, or do you try to get somebody with a little bit more experience, or, or how do you do that? Well, uh, unfortunately, that rough week you talked about uh, just got rougher today. Uh, the Cowboys uh, ended up having to place uh, their backup quarterback, Andy Dalton, who they thought would come out of concussion protocol uh, by tomorrow to be able to practice, but they ended up having to place him on reserve COVID-19. Uh, so he's going to be out at least a week, maybe uh, a couple weeks. So now, basically, uh, the Cowboys are down to their rookie quarterback, Ben DiNucci, uh, the guy that was the backup this past game, uh, Garrett Gilbert, and, and also uh, a week ago, they signed uh, their former backup quarterback, Cooper Rush, uh, to the practice squad. He had to go through six days of COVID protocol testing. Uh, he cleared all that, so he's eligible to practice uh, on Wednesday. So that gives them a choice of three quarterbacks to go forward. Uh, but the, the darndest thing is, uh, with those guys, Rush was with the Cowboys as the backup quarterback quite a bit. Uh, Garrett Gilbert has bounced around the NFL, uh, played uh, in the AAF this spring and uh, actually was the best quarterback going almost uh, over those eight games. But Danucci has the most NFL snaps under his belt uh, after finishing off the previous game and then starting uh, against the Eagles. So uh, I don't know if the Cowboys have a decision to make or if they just go and say, you know what, we spent all this time getting Danucci ready. Uh, we're going to go with the rookie. Uh, that remains to be seen. Well, let me tell you why I said that, because I covered Andy Dalton when he was in, at TCU, and um, he's a tough guy. And when I saw that he was uh, still in concussion protocol, I thought, well, it's going to be a while. So I thought, you know, that's, that brought the question up of riding Danucci the rest of the way out, because I don't know how soon he comes back from that. I mean, that looked like a devastating concussion. I mean, you know how, how guys could get a severe concussion where it last more than, you know, multiple weeks. And so th that's where that question came from. Uh, yeah, it, and Van, you know what? I, and he, I, it looked like from everything that Mike McCarthy uh, said yesterday and Jerry Jones said early this morning uh, that he was going to clear the concussion protocol and be ready to go this week. And, you know, and they were thinking, you know, we can go the rest of the way with Andy. Uh, w you know, we're in good shape. But unfortunately, this came up. And uh, all I can say is it's 2020. Right. And then the offensive line, you know, you got to get those problems shored up. Uh, before you face a team like Pittsburgh. I mean, the, the Steelers' defense, not only does it seem to be a defense that has a lot of teeth, but, but they, they're so aggressive. And, and, and I, I just don't know how that's going to play with uh, a guy like Danucci being out there. And, and, you know, he wasn't the guy running the show at the beginning of the year. We all know what happened with Dak. But, but, but you, you just have to have some more consistency up on the offensive line to go forward against a team like Pittsburgh. Well, they've needed that consistency over these last three games, all losses, right? Uh, Washington was aggressive, Philadelphia's aggressive, and, and Pittsburgh's aggressive, too. Uh, you're exactly right. So those guys got to, you know, it helped that Zach Martin was back uh, for this past game against the Eagles. And if you notice where the Cowboys were running, uh, they sort of got right-handed, and they were going uh, behind their all-pro guard. Uh, so that certainly helped. They just got to shore up those tackles. Those guys have to play better. Uh, they have to be the quarterback's best friend. So if they can give Danucci or whoever they decide to start a little bit more time in the pocket, they might be able to produce, you know, maybe, you know, 17 to 20 points. If the defense can continue to play the way they did against Philadelphia, that gives you a chance to uh, go ahead and, and win the game. And, you know, this last week, and it might have been just because it was Baltimore and the way they, uh, how, how high functioning their offense is, but Baltimore ran for 263 yards against the Steelers. This might have been a what off. It might have been one of those days. Uh, but their two running backs, uh, Baltimore's, uh, ended up rushing 31 times for 200 yards against the Steelers. I'm sure we're going to see that uh, with the boys. Uh, probably going to give them a heavy dose of Zeke until they stop them. You know what I mean? You, At least why, try, why you, right? Yeah. yeah. You might be able to control the game that way.
Well, defensively, it looked like, uh, you know, they gave Philadelphia uh, trouble last week, but, uh, but the outcome still being the same. But, but uh, Randy Gregory looked like he was ready to dust some rust off and make some good plays. I mean, I, I thought he had a, a couple of good plays out there where he shined. Well, he, he ended up getting about, it was roughly a little bit more than 30 snaps in the game. So just think about that. The last time uh, he had played maybe that many snaps would have been uh, the, the second playoff game after the 2018 season. Uh, and, and, and so that's a long time, and you're right. That's a lot of rust to knock off. But I think his performance was uh, definitely encouraging. Uh, he may get more snaps this time. Uh, he just has this unique ability to turn the corner, rushing the quarterback, and, and not just rushing the quarterback. He actually came up, I, I believe it was four tackles. Right. Uh, so that, that's meaningful because that defensive end has to set the edge against the run. And the secondary, uh, you know, they have their troubles and stuff like that. What, have you seen anything or, or, or do you believe that they've done anything that uh, encourages you as they get ready to play Pittsburgh, where they could slow Big Ben down because, you know, with Smith Schuster, now you got Claypool to worry about. And so, they're, 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 you know, the weapons just keep coming week in and week out. We know the NFL is a, a legitimate league, it's a, it's a tough league, but they're going to have to face that kind of challenge this week. Yeah, and the way you slow Big Ben down is to get a pass rush on him. It's not all on the secondary. I thought the Cowboys did a decent job at times. Uh, causing uh, Carson Wentz to either yeah. hold the football uh, or, uh, you know, throw, throw uh, passes that were ill-advised. Uh, some of that had to do with coverage, but a lot of it had to do with some of the pressure the Cowboys were getting on them. So that's got to continue with the pressure. And then, you know, these guys did a better job of covering. Uh, you know, you saw Trayvon Diggs. Uh, you know, somebody called it his coming out party. Well, okay, I know he intercepted two passes, but he also got beat for two touchdown passes. Uh, so, but again, with a rookie quarterback, a cornerback, that's what you want. You know, yeah. you're going to expect that he's going to give up plays, but you got to make some plays too, uh, because teams are going to pick on you. Absolutely. Uh, and as I said previously, then you got to pick some things off uh, to even things out. And that's what he did against Philadelphia. Maybe the defense up front needs to be like a step quicker because unlike Carson Wentz, Ben Roethlisberger is not going to hold the ball that long. He's going to get rid of it, and uh, th there's not going to be as much time to get to him and make that kind of pressure because Wentz does have that habit of hanging on to the ball a little bit too long. Yeah, and, and, and the good thing probably with, uh, with Roethlisberger is he's probably not going to run out of the pocket as much <laughs> as some of the quarterbacks the Cowboys have faced. They probably know where he's going to be. Yeah, and that's going to be a difference. Well, special teams-wise, uh, do you think that uh, – how, how, how would you grade special teams at this time of the year, the Cowboys special teams? Oh, I, I think it's been somewhat average, maybe a little bit above average. Uh, you know, they probably got as much out of Zerline kicking field goals as they could have expected. Uh, I know he missed the one – uh, very badly uh, against the Eagles, but the wind was really blustery. It was blowing 20-some miles an hour, and it looked like it was blowing across the field. Uh, they've come up with a couple trick kicks that uh, one worked and one almost worked, the pooch kick after the safety. Uh, and, and then they actually got a return the previous game. Uh, they've struggled punting, and then the unfortunate thing is, is Chris Jones is dealing with that abdomen uh, strain that bothered him last last year. Uh, he cropped up again this past week and just hasn't been kicking the ball as well as he normally does. But, you know, they've got another punter uh, on the practice squad, uh, Hunter Niswander. Uh, but again, the thing that Chris Jones gives you that maybe someone else doesn't that might punt better is he's your holder and you'd hate to mess up that operation. Who knows? I don't know if anybody's ever kept two punters <laughs> Uh, on the active roster, but that might be a possibility. And I got one more for you. You know, you, you brought up the wind, and, and I just noticed the wind seemed to be a factor, of, even with the receivers. Michael Gallup had some drops that he normally wouldn't have in that last game. And, and you know, because, I, like, he's another guy that I've covered since he was in college when he was at CSU. And he, he's just a guarantee, but he had a couple of drops that I was surprised he had them. And I know the wind and all that stuff does play a factor. Yeah, and then you're with a different quarterback, and right. you know the ball starts fluttering a little bit, Van. But again, uh, you know if they can just protect whoever's going to start at quarterback just a little bit more, 
Uh, I, I think they have a, a, enough uh, that they can score some points. Now, again, the defense has to step up and play as well as it did against Philadelphia uh, against the Steelers. Mickey, they might call on you to take some runs, man. You know, go back to your old running back days. You might have to go up to gut, man, and, and, and get some yards for him. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll have to pass on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Mickey Spagnuolo, thank you for your time. Okay, you're welcome.